this class, we're going to take this first part. This first part. And we're going to define a new word for it. And then similarly, we're going to take this second part and we're going to define a new word for this. And this first part we're going to call, we're going to use the symbol S. And the second part we're going to use the symbol PF. So this is going to be apparent power and this is going to be power factor. And these are the, these two that we're learning from our objectives that we're learning about today. So apparent power is something that is measured not in watts, but in volt amps. So volt amps is, I'll just write it again, apparent power. And Ben Schreier, what is watts a measure of? Watts is a measure of power. Watts is a, what kind of power? It is a measure of power. You're exactly right. Not apparent power, that's volt amps, but watts is? Instantaneous power. Yeah, it is instantaneous power. And it's also a measure of average power. So both those things are measured in watts. The real thing is instantaneous power, right? And this apparent power is kind of a weird thing. If we're measuring it across a resistor, you've just said that the difference between the voltage and the current phasers for a resistor is zero. So cosine of zero is one. And so for a resistor, there's no difference between apparent power and average power. But you know, there's a massive difference between that and for a inductor or capacitor. An inductor or capacitor is always zero watts average power, but if we don't multiply it by this zero, it does have non-zero apparent power. The definition is going to be just simply volts RMS times current RMS. That's easy. It's always a scalar, not a phaser. It's a number like 17 volt amps or 13 volt amps, whereas P average is going to be zero for capacitors and inductors. S in general is non-zero for capacitors and inductors. So the intuition behind this is average power is how much heat energy is going to be generated in your circuit. Whereas this apparent power is also talking about the power losses as power shuttled back and forth between your load and your generator. You know, if you've got a pure capacitor at the end, it's not going to generate any average power, but it will shuttle power back and forth between the power lines of the generator and the load constantly. The power company does not like you to shuttle power back and forth across its power lines because it's going to be losing energy across its own power lines. So the apparent power is what the power company charges you for. So even if you've got a load that is purely, say, inductive, a lot of motors look like very large inductive loads, right? Because you're a coil of wire. Even if you've got a very inductive load that if it's a pure inductor is, is using up absolutely no power on average at all, you're still going to get charged by the power company because the power company is going to be losing some power along its own transmission lines as it shuttles uh, energy back and forth. So um, like with the power stuff, so like that meter on like the side of your house and that little box and the little thing that goes into your house, that's what's transferring all that power in the motors. That's kind of how that works. That's, a, that's exactly what's measuring. So that one little box on the side of your house powers your entire house. So all the power in your house goes through these meters. Now it doesn't come from these meters. It just goes through the meters. If it's a perfect meter, the meter is absorbing no power. That'd be kind of mean if the meter was absorbing power that you're paying for. What this meter is measuring is apparent power. It is measuring the VRMS across the lines going into your house times the IRMS flowing through the lines into your house. And it is not correcting that for phase at all. Uh, Colonel Schwark, could you go over the uh, intuition one more time, please? Yeah. So the intuition for what apparent power is, is it is what the power company charges you for. If you've got your generator on one side and if you've got your load on the other, apparent power has to do with the total amount of power that is transitioning across those power lines. Now, if you've got a resistor, it's pretty easy. If your load looks purely resistive, apparent power is the same as average power because this whole portion is just one. So your apparent power is the same as your average power. And in that case, all of your power is just going from the generator into your load. And it's pretty simple. But if you've got a capacitor, say, 
then your power is being shuttled back and forth between the generator and the load. For half of your cycle going up, the capacitor is absorbing power. For half the cycle, the capacitor is delivering power back to your generator. Your average power is zero, but because there's power going back and forth between these power lines, there's power being lost in these power lines. Your power company wants to charge you for that. And so it's going to charge you for apparent power, not average power. How is that as an explanation? That was good. Thank you. Sure. So it's sort of, so another way of thinking about it is the apparent power is sort of like the magnitude on the power lines, no matter what direction it is. Average power is just the power going from the generator to the load. Maybe that's a clear way of writing it. There's an awful lot of these definitions this time. Very shortly, I'll introduce a new notation that will make sense of it all. But for now, just try to keep all these different types of power uh, jostling around in your head. So the thing that connects apparent power with average power is this thing called power factor, which we abbreviate as PF. Power factor is the cosine of the difference in angle, KC. Is there any difference between cosine of theta V minus theta I and cosine of theta I minus theta V? It's the same thing as asking, is there any difference between cosine of seven and cosine of minus seven? I mean, these, so is there any difference between cosine of seven and cosine of negative seven, KC? If you're not sure, take a look at what the what a cosine wave looks like. Is there any difference between what it's doing over here at seven and what it's doing over here at negative seven? Nope. No. How about cosine of three versus cosine of negative three? Same thing. Same thing. How about cosine of x versus cosine of negative x? The same thing. Same thing because it's mirrored image around zero. So these are gonna be the same either way. So therefore these are the same either way. So it doesn't matter if you write it theta V minus theta I or theta I minus theta V, all that matters is the difference between the two. Caleb, for a purely resistive load, what is the power factor? It's none, right? It's just like one. There's no difference between the phases. And so therefore the power factor, which is the cosine of the difference is? Zero. So there's no difference in the phases. Right, theta V minus theta I is zero for resistive load. So what is cosine of zero? One. One. So power factor is one for a purely resistive load. What is it for a purely capacitive? Zero. Or inductive load? It's going to be zero. Because it has the phase change, 90. Because it has a 90 degree phase shift, either plus 90 or minus 90. Doesn't matter, as Casey just said, cosine of plus zero. or minus 90 will still give us zero. And so... Power factors will range between zero, which is the worst, and one, which is the best. If you want to uh, get a lot of power from your load, you want it to have a power factor of one, purely resistive, then apparent power equals power factor, and all the, the money you're being charged for by the power company for apparent power is being delivered. If you've got a purely capacitive load, your power factor is zero, that's the worst, you're developing no average power from your load, and worse yet, you're being charged for it by the power company. In fact, you can figure out what your average power is. It's equal to your apparent power times your power factor. That's really what we set up here. Average power is equal to apparent power times power factor. So I just wrote it down, down here. So this is what you can use, and this is what you are charged for. The last thing that you need to know with all this, and I ran out of room. I'll just add it over here is whether or not things are leading or lagging. When we took the cosine of this difference, we hid whether or not our current is positive or negative relative to our voltage. And that actually matters. We wanna measure everything relative to our voltage. So if our phase of our current is greater than our phase of our voltage, we say it is a leading power factor. And that's the same thing as saying we have a capacitive load. If our current is lagging relative to our voltage, we say it is lagging power factor. And that's the same thing as saying it is an inductive load. And I guess the third choice would be saying that they're equal. And then the power factor is going to be one. And that's the same thing as saying we have a resistive load.